Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect anything like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah ha ha ha, don't get ahead of yourself. Diaries always had a habit of getting upset with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Ah, let's go with Yuri now. Actually, let's go with Natsuki and Yuri. Or, or both. Let's go with Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. Oh, thanks. But I can't really say it's any better either. Woo! Huh? You what? Ah, why do you think that's in a train wreck? I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Ah, <laughs> glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's... Uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayuri's poem from yesterday. Eh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, well I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. Well, you never really stuck. Truck struck me as her type. Sayuri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but I see how can someone, uh, so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, you would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take each other of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Ooh. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I hear her singing my favorite's love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. But if her friend starts to like spiders too, that's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Ah. Huh. Okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Um. No? Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler and analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who anyone like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my That doesn't matter, I it can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make they'd make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what people like? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. 
And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Oh, okay. And Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Kevgui. Your skills are already improving. I am? It is? Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much as if it seems like you, can get, you can't get your poem to feel perfect. I don't know why I'm stammering. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic uh, Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Huh, I thought it was going to be darker at the end. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if, it, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my own unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Oh, that's funny. Huh? Didn't Atsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for strange interest? Eh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Ah, uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? I, I believe so. Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't worry I said that. Ah, uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. No problemo. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? No, it's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. 
Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P -p -p uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Terry's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee hee hee. Sorry, who's been coloring a poster holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. Not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago? It's a lot to ask for them to reset their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Yes, I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? Try them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes... It, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Uh... I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice resetting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way. Annika, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of your other club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Annika flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Ooh. And we will find out in the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. Woo, what these poems will be like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys didn't, please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye.